Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're going to be taking a look at a classic brown bag MRE. And if you don't know what MRE stands for, that stands for Meal Ready to Eat. So, this is a menu number 9, Pork Chow Mein. This particular MRE right here is from 1993. Now that was the first year for this menu. There was actually a lot of firsts in 1993. It was the first year for the flameless ration heater being inside the bag. It was also the first year for this menu. It was uh, the first year for having pound cakes inside there. There was uh, the first year for having sugar-free drinks, I believe. Just a lot of firsts for uh, 1993. They also changed the shape of the boxes which uh, hopefully I'll be doing an unboxing of a case of 93s to show you guys the difference between a 1992 case and a 1993 case. But I just kind of want to do a quick review of this 1993 pork chow mein and see what it's all about. So let's go ahead and check this thing out. This looks like it's in pretty good shape. The bag looks pretty nice on it. It's still holding air inside, which is always a good sign. Like I said, it's a uh, menu number nine. So let's go ahead and get this thing cut open. Now, on my last video, I showed you guys that I had this knife that I can change the blades out on. I'll pull this blade off right now. And I'll put on the hunting blade with the gut hook. Now, the blades are extremely sharp on these. I always cut my stuff from the back. That's like a razor blade. Always give it a smell inside to see if there's any weird smells coming out of there. Hmm. No, it actually smells pretty good in there. All right, let's check out the contents. Uh, the first thing I came across are these uh, noodles, chow mein, or the chow mein noodles. And there's our date code of the 111th day of 1993. Hopefully you guys can see that. All right, cool. We've got our brown spoon, which I think this is the second or third year for the brown spoon. There's a loose bottle of Tabasco sauce that wasn't in the accessory packet. Cookie bar, chocolate covered. Beverage base powder, cherry. We've got a package of freeze-dried peaches. And they still feel perfect. Package of MRE crackers. This is really cool. This is the first year flameless ration heater made by True Tech Incorporated, Riverhead, New York. Very cool. Be interesting to see if this thing still works. Uh, the original rock or something graphics on there. This bag is a lot longer. Then the bags now, they're about this long, so this has got another three inches at least on the bags that they put in there now. We'll check that out. Package of peanut butter that says knead package before opening. And that is very important if you have MRE peanut butter. You want to make sure to knead that very well. The main entree, pork chow mein, packed by Shelf Stable Foods Incorporated, Evansville, Indiana. We also have an accessory packet. We'll check that out now. There's a pack of matches that are kind of like uh, red with red tips, produced by D.D. Bean and Sons, North Carolina. We have the infamous wet nap that Steve likes so well. He likes the way these ones smell really well. These do smell pretty good, though. Six gram pack of Domino Sugar, a package of Lighthouse U.S. Issue Butt Ration, a package of Taster's Choice in the brown pack, four gram pack of Cream Substitute Dry Non-Dairy, also four grams of iodized salt. And lastly, we have two green chiclets. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get all this stuff put out onto the tray and we'll start checking it out. All right, so we'll start off by getting our main going. Say so that feels like it's got a lot of liquid going on in there. All right, we'll get our flameless ration heater opened up and see if this thing's gonna work. Use my knife to cut it open. And these old ones usually take about 10 to 12 minutes to even get started. So we'll get our water put down in there. Of course, I've got some salt water on standby. We'll fill it up to the line. I think that'll do right there. Get that good and saturated. And I'm going to throw it back in my box. This thing's actually taken off fairly quickly. Hopefully you can hear that. But it's kind of started to inflate the package, so it's definitely starting to work. I can feel some heat coming through there. 
All right, so while that's doing its thing, we're going to go ahead and get our beverages mixed up real quick. I'll spare you the mixing them up. Just show you the, fin the final product. I'll mix my cherry up first. That looks pretty good. It smells fantastic. Now, there it is. It's super bright red. Hopefully, you can see that. Next, we'll check out our coffee. Well, unfortunately, the coffee is dry molded. I have absolutely no luck with the taster's choice. Not red or brown. All right, so we'll go ahead and get our peanut butter opened up next. I'm going to cut just the corner off that so I got some more control. Crackers. Nice hiss. Those are some pretty good looking crackers. Next we'll take a look at our freeze dried fruit, peaches. Poke a little hole in that to see if we get a hiss out of this. Oh yeah, that was a really good hiss. It's got a really nice collar to it. Give it a smell there. It doesn't have much of a smell at all. Really cool looking. It's like a little piece of styrofoam candy fruit. Next, we'll take a look at our cookie bar chocolate covered. That looks absolutely perfect and smells amazing. It smells like some really rich milk chocolate. That's kind of what that smells like. Doesn't really smell shelf stable, this doesn't, for some reason. And the last thing we have to open up here is our chow mein noodles. We've got a fresh pack, desiccant pack in there. And we've got our chow mein noodles. I'm gonna hold off dumping them out and set them off here to the side until we get our main entree dumped out. Go ahead and put some peanut butter out on our cracker here. And there he is, our peanut buddy. Those crackers look like they're really toasted nicely. All right, so I'm pleasantly surprised on this one, and this is no joke, probably the hottest flameless ration heater I've ever touched before. I wish I had one of those laser thermometers and I could show you guys how hot this thing is. Like, it's so hot I don't even want to touch it. It's insane. This thing really did do its job and held up since 1993, so... They were doing something right back then, that's for sure. It's still got plenty of heat left in it. Give it a good wipe down with a paper towel here. Okay, I've got it all cleaned up. It'll be interesting to see if this pork main dish has held up all these years. Give it a look and a smell. That's a lot of liquid. Mm, it smells really good, though. Dump it out here. All right, well, I got to say, that looks pretty good right there. I see some uh, big old mushrooms in there. I think that's uh, water chestnut. Some pretty good sizable chunks of pork in there. I see some celery. A really nice, kind of thin gravy. And then we've got these uh, chow mein noodles over here. I really want to try one of these out on its own. That's exactly what you would expect. It's kind of dry, a little bit salty, got a nice toasted flavor to it. I'm sure these are going to go really good inside of that, though. We're going to try just the, uh, the chow mein on its own right now. Get a piece of everything. Get a mushroom, some pork, a water chestnut. All right, here we go with 1993 pork chow mein down the hatch. That is absolutely amazing. Kind of reminds you of like a chicken stock. The water chestnuts are still nice and crispy. I love water chestnuts. Figured if one dish was going to go bad, that it would be the one with the pork in it. Uh, I'm not a big fan of mushrooms, but I really didn't taste them in there. 
I can taste the celery cooked into this. You get that celery flavor in there, which I think adds a really nice flavor to anything that it's cooked inside of. The chunks of pork are uh, a little bit dry, but I kind of like that. And they have a really good chew to them. It's just absolutely fantastic. I'm, I'm going to finish this. There's no doubt in my mind. But I do want to try it sprinkling a little bit of these chow mein noodles inside to see what that's all about. There we go with the noodles. Adding the chow mein noodles in there, it really does change the texture up. You get these that are super crunchy. And you also get now like a smoky toasted flavor that comes through because of the noodles. And they do add a really nice flavor to it. I'm going to eat some more of this while it's uh, still hot. Yeah, I went ahead and finished off all the noodles out of there. I noticed you kind of get a little bit of a sweet and sour follow-up, kind of like an aftertaste, but this is actually really pretty decent. It's not a bad meal. It's kind of like a, seems like a home-cooked meal. I'm telling you, I wish you guys could, this heater, you could still make a hot cup of coffee with this flameless ration heater. It is so hot still. It's crazy. All right, to wash that down, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a shot of my cherry drink here got a very artificial cherry flavor it's straight up cherry kool-aid if you guys have never had cherry kool-aid kind of hard for me to describe any other way because kool-aid kind of has a unique flavor and that's what that tastes like to me it tastes just like cherry kool-aid just that fake artificial cherry flavor and it's actually quite sweet so it's not bad i mean it'll definitely uh, quench your thirst there's no doubt about that i want to move on and try uh, some of this cracker back here and see how these things are doing Give just the cracker a try on its own. These older MRE crackers have a fantastic malted barley flavor that the newer crackers just don't have. And I think these are going to mix really well inside the main entree. And they're just as fresh as they were the day they were packed. There's no staleness to them or anything like that. So I'm going to give this main entree a try with a little bit of cracker in it and see how that does for it. I actually like the flavor that the cracker adds to this more than what I do the chow mein noodles. Just something about that toasted flavor of that malted barley cracker. I don't know what it is, but if you guys have never had these and you get a chance to try them, definitely uh, give these old crackers a try. Tabasco really just kind of drowns out the uh, whole flavor of the chow mein. I'm not a big fan of putting this Tabasco in this. I would probably just hang on to my little bottle of Tabasco for a different meal sometime later. But I do want to try this peanut butter out on these crackers back here. And there's the peanut butter MRE cracker. Yeah, that's just thick, rich, and creamy MRE peanut butter. I can't complain about that at all. And I know a lot of guys complain about that being super dry and thirst-provoking. But I've had a lot of peanut butters that are way worse than this. This is nowhere near as bad as uh, like a cheap peanut butter that you could buy right now. So after the peanut butter cracker, I think I want to give this... Uh, Cookie bar chocolate cover to try. It's an oatmeal cookie chocolate covered. There's you a good look at the cross section on that. All right, I'm going to give that a try now. These things are fantastic. I'll bet this tastes just as good right now as it did back in 1993. That chocolate gives it a nice little crunch on the outside, and then the cookie's good and crunchy on the inside with a nice, strong oatmeal flavor. It's just absolutely fantastic. I want to try something that I've never tried before, and I'm going to add some peanut butter onto the chocolate covered oatmeal cookie and see how that goes. Wow, that is just probably going to be one of my favorite new things to do. It adds a little bit of a saltiness to that sweetness and that creamy peanut butter goes really well with that chocolate. That is just absolutely fantastic. All right, so uh, moving on to our freeze-dried peach block back here. And there's a good look at the cross section inside of that. It's definitely got a real nice pink color to it. Give that a try. I'll tell you guys, these things are just such a treat to have. It's just like a piece of freeze-dried candy. I mean, and it's also good for you at the same time. This is something that they absolutely need to bring back and put into rations for our troops now. I can't imagine guys not liking this. If you're in a humid climate, though... It's going to start breaking down very fast after you open it. So you'll have to eat it as soon as you open it. But, uh, man, this thing is just awesome. 
All right, while we're at it, let's go ahead and try out our matches for a change. Because I think these ones should still work really well. Oh, yeah. Nice first strike. Day's lit. Too bad about the coffee, but I'll say the flameless ration heater working as well as it did and the pork chow mein being as good as it still is, this meal has held up tremendously well. I do know that they that these meals were stored pretty well. The guy bought them for uh, Y2K and stored them in his uh, bedroom and in closets. So they've been uh, temperature controlled probably around 68, 70 degrees from upstate Indiana. So hopefully it didn't get too awful hot up there. And uh, I think they, they had pretty decent temperatures their entire life. So this meal, fully edible. The only thing that was bad in it was the coffee. And that just seems to happen to me almost every time. So I think that's just a kind of a bad luck thing for me. But all right, guys. This has been a review of a 1993 menu number nine, pork chow mein. It's been a fun one to check out. This is the part where I want to thank my patrons for being uh, loyal supporters. I really do thank you guys. I appreciate everything you guys do. Of course, I'll have a list of them up as I'm talking about them. And I've got another mail time video coming up here real soon. I didn't have enough stuff to shoot for January, but uh, towards the end of February, I'm going to shoot one, and it'll be out uh, at the beginning of the next month. So if you guys want to send anything to the next Old Smokey's mail time, feel free to... Uh, hit up my address it's down there in the description just click on that box that's right underneath the video that says description it'll open that up and my address is right there i want to say also that i appreciate everybody that has sent something in and uh if you haven't seen your stuff up yet it will be up soon also i mentioned my patrons i also have a link to my patreon page down there if you guys feel like donating a dollar or anything like that just go ahead and uh, click on my patreon link down there and it'll walk you through anything that you need to do to uh, help the channel out. And I appreciate anybody who does that. Alright, well, I want to say thank you all for watching. And I'll see you on the next ration review. Later.